Hello everybody, this will be a video covering my highlight of Mix 2 Matchbox 2022. Uh, we're going to get right in here. We got 12 cars this time. This is two times the amount I had in Mix 1 highlights. Um, and probably two times the amount I'm going to have in Mix 3 because that mix is bad. The BMW is so nice too. And it's like the really only thing in there worth getting. The BMW, the Opal, and the Bronco. And the Samvar. I think in total I had six picked out that I wanted. Uh, I haven't even found it in store yet. And I think it came out last month. Not looking good for me. But we're here talking about Mix 2, which was an awesome mix. So we'll get right into it. Right into it here. These, of course, are my highlights. I know people might pick out other stuff. This mix was so good, though. I think I got everything that wasn't a fantasy car. So we're going to start right here with the 1934 Chevy Master Coupe. This isn't one that I got. I didn't get the original release of this uh, in red. I never found it. But uh, I like this blue way better. Definitely need some chrome detail. On the bumper there. Let's just get this out. So it is like a metal flake blue. Very nice. You do get nice details on the front. They tampoed on the plastic, which is nice to see. Just reposition the chair. Um, you do get a blue Chevy logo, which is accurate. Of course, I can probably touch up this grill a bit. And the bumper, the, the white does not work. I like the black fenders on the blue. Only the center caps are painted on this one. The wheels. No tail lights. That's okay. This is a solid casting. I don't know. I think the rear wheel is larger. It kind of looks funny. I don't know if that's accurate to the real one. But yeah, look at that. Otherwise, it's a really nice casting. Definitely deserves to be in the highlights. This vehicle is a little older than what I typically buy. I usually try to stay around the 1950s, but <clears throat> I don't go under the 1950s. But this being stock, I'll, I'll get it. The hot rods, maybe not. But this one, eh, it's a stock one, so I'll get it. Not to block it out, but here was a 2020 Land Rover Defender 90. Left the plastic on the car. This one, you know, I, I've expressed my views about this one being like, oh, I, it's too small, and it is. It's a good casting, but it's small, and also they can't really detail it fully. Oh, like that. that's dusty. On like this. But I like the blue on this one. Very nice blue. I just wish it was a four door. The 110. Or as I have now, the 130, which is freaking awesome. It's a boat. You get your headlights, Defender on the hood, Land Rover badge. You get your tail lights. I don't know what those are on the side, and those are markers. Defender and your Land Rover badge again. I'm pretty sure that's all the same details as the original. Of course, I added some. I have to touch up this spare tire, but yeah, it's all the same details. Of course, I refined mine. And I might do the same to this one. Dang, we're starting out with some blues. I think we gotta, we gotta divide this one up a bit. 
So a lot of second releases here. This mix was... No, this mix had three, four actually. Second release colors. That one was originally red, green. This one was originally blue, the Bentley Bontega. I love it in red. This thing's awesome. Still a heavy casting, even though there is no interior. This Metal Flake Red is awesome. And there you got your headlights. Grills. Your vast amount of grills. Your Bentley logo and Bentley on the plate. Tinted windows for that luxury experience. So not chrome wheels. They're just like the... Not the shiny chrome, they're just the regular chrome. The reflective, I should say. There's your tail lights looking pretty good. Bentley. And you got your chrome trim. Of course, there's a lot more chrome trim that I could add around the windows, but this looks very good for being a $1 model. How Matchbox is always going to do good with that. Almost like that wheel's like sitting there funny. It rolls fine. Dude, look at the colors in there. Those are some nice colors. They go good together. Let's go back to blue, though. Speaking of nice colors, the 2016 Alfa Romeo Giulia. This is the third release of this casting, and actually, I have them right here, so let's. why not do this? Oh, actually, it's the fourth release. I always forget about the premium one. I don't have it. We get a, we get a red, white, and blue theme going on here. Yeah, there is a gray release in the premium line, quote unquote. I don't have that one. I didn't like the wheels. I could always swap them, but I think these mainline ones are enough. Here we got red, white, and blue. Uh, in order of release, too. That's interesting. Uh, we'll put those ones back off to the side. Oh, crap. Of course, drop the white one. This blue is probably my favorite. I love the white with the black wheels. If this had black wheels, it would definitely be my favorite. But I think it is anyway, just because of this color. Look, that, look how clear that badge is. I don't think... I don't know if the first edition was like, like that. No, it wasn't. They've refined the badge on the grill. That is awesome. The headlight details are just a little more refined. I don't know. I think I like, I think I like the uh, older one better. But I definitely like the grill on the new one here. Uh, the newer release... Nothing's changed about it, just the decal print. Julia. Yeah, that badge is really crisp. For a $1 car. I like it. Beautiful car. Next up. Volkswagen Golf Mark 1. Easily, easily the best release of this casting. The only stock release. And it's in the GTI livery. I don't know if it's... The casting isn't based on a GTI, I don't think. Oh, it is. Stuff on the base. Uh, the, the, the packaging doesn't say GTI. But it is a GTI. And yeah, stock livery, silver, with a black trim. I love it. Look at those headlights. You got your Volkswagen badge, GTI. You got your black grill, your red trim. You got a black pinstripe up there, and then your black two tone down there. Well, I shouldn't say two tone, but your black trim around the fender. 
the rocker, and uh, how about another fender? All it needs is a towel light, but that, that's really easy. It's a silver car too. You don't even have to like layer. Where's your gas cap? What an awesome release. Definitely. Definitely the only one that I am keeping. I, I only have the orange one, the original orange one, and that one is that one is useless with this one now. <laughs> Beautiful. Casting. Well, these are European cars. And actually, there's one more. That's a new model. But uh, let's get to some of the Japanese recolors before we get to the new model. Honda Ridgeline. This is a uh, new set by Matchbox here. It's I, I don't know what it's called. It's like a mini set within the main line. Uh, this one is representing the United States. In mix three, no, four, this is, no, yeah, in mix three, you will see a Land Rover representing Africa, and then in mix five, there will be a Nissan Z representing Japan. So interesting little side set they're going on here. I don't know if they're trying to bring back the Matchbox World or something. Remember those old Matchbox World sets? Uh, definitely cool, and uh, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna get them all because they all match with the logo. I'm still trying to decide how the Honda Ridgeline became the vehicle for America, because it's a Japanese truck. It was only made for America, but it's still Japanese. Not JDM. It's just Japanese, so I don't know how it ended up here, but in the set, <laughs> but. You get no details on the front. You get half tail light. That's it. Nothing else on the back. This is a retool, I think. 2016 retool. So, not at all plastic bed anymore. Blue windows, which are bad. Uh, I love the orange color on this. And I think they're trying to give, like, a construction vibe to this one. I don't, there's no, like, there's nothing else on here. It's pretty clean for what it is. Yeah, it's a very interesting livery. I like the black fenders, and then of course you got your United States logo and ridge line down below. Other side should be the same. It is. I like the gold wheels in this one too. Pretty nice. Definitely a keeper. Here is another recolor. This is the third recolor of the CVCC. Yeah, I think so. This one in red looks very nice. Kind of leaves a bit to be desired since the bumpers aren't chrome. But the details are very nice. There's your headlights, your grill. Your chrome, your trim, all that good stuff. Honda badge. Tail lights are done really nice. CBCC Honda Dreams on the plate. The matchbox plate. And I think that's a trunk lock. I thought I thought that was a chip at first, but no, it's a trunk lock. Otherwise, very clean. The only livery that this d deserves to be in is a clean livery. Or no livery at all, just clean. Uh, I want to say details count as livery. This it's got like that weird tinted gray base. I don't know. I don't like it. Wish it was chrome. But what? The, do they chrome anything in this? Oh, they chrome the El Camino. We'll get to that. Otherwise, that's a nice one. We're gonna run out of space here because so much good, so much good models. Last of the recolors here. And uh, this is a, the return of a legend. Uh, I'm, I should get the first release of it first. You already know what I'm talking about. This casting debuted in 2016. Debuted in 2016. Right? Yeah. It's a 26, uh, actually 2017. 
the Tacoma with the removable camper. And it only had one release at for a while. This we were thinking this is gonna be a one and done because it had its release, and then T Toyota and Mattel had their disagreement, and no more Tacoma. They couldn't do it any longer. But finally, Toyota's back, and it took it took Matchbox a couple years for them to get this back in the line. But here he is, finally. The 2016 Toyota Tacoma is back in a uh, fake TRD livery. I don't know why it's not licensed TRD, but maybe because it's not a TRD casting, that would make sense. Mm, I don't know. We're not going to keep it around. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll put it over here. I thought the camper was a really interesting idea. Uh, it doesn't make too much sense in die cast because it kind of ruined the casting i mean i don't care about the interior but i think this thing sits very low like there's like no ground clearance there so i think without the camper they could have raised it a little bit this is like why is that sitting like in there very loose this that's sturdy comes out and i'm sure you can if you're wanting to you can switch them around. I painted the windows on mine, I don't know why. Uh, I don't think this will look good with the... <laughs> there, you can do that if you want to. Alright, we'll move that. So you get no details on this one. Yeah, I think the front end's a little wide. Like, the headlights are very big. There's your TRD livery, got your chrome wheels, BF Goodrich, and you got some interesting trim at the bottom here. Kind of matches with the bumpers. Yeah, I mean, just look proportionally. Look how big the front end is. It's almost like they used the 20... What's the lifeguard one? Like a 2018? Or not 18. Might have been 18. 2012, I think. It's like they used the cab from that one. And then they just... <laughs> I mean, look how much bigger that looks. I don't know, just, the front end doesn't look right. It's still a fun casting. And it's nice to see the Tacoma getting some representation. And of course, with the new Hot Wheels one. It's a nice pair up. Even though they're both, they're both kind of off. The Matchbox is somehow wider than the Hot Wheels one. Oh. Yeah, there you go. I still don't like the stance on the Hot Wheels one. The roof line is smushed. It's smushed. Alright. Let's get to the new castings. We're starting off with... The Ford C900 or the COE 1965. This is a, I, I'm gonna, I'll say retool rather than new model because this casting has existed in the Super Convoy line back in the early 2000s, but it was huge. It was proportional. I mean, to think about it, this truck should be huge. But they, for this retool, they scaled it down for the main line, so it's a bit smaller than it used to be. But all the details are still there. You got your nice headlights. This is, of course, in a shell livery, so it's very classic yellow and red. No chrome details on this one. I don't think it would have chrome details. Maybe it would. Actually, I think, especially up in this area, it should have some chrome details. Should have brought a trailer down here to hook it up with. There's your convoy wheels, though. Not the super convoy wheels. These are just the regular ones. There's the back. I'm not sure, like, about all these details. I'm not a truck driver. You got your air horns up here. And your uh, roof lights. 
And your interior looking pretty crowded because of the, the pillar. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool truck. Nice to see it in the um, main line. I hope it goes into the regular convoy line. That'd be pretty cool. But uh, I'm curious how they how this doesn't stay like that because the packaging does on the shelves. You see them on the shelves; they're all like tilted. We can we can tow the Tacoma if we wanted to. I should say shelves, I should say pegs. Now let's get to the new models. Porsche 911, or 918 Spider. Well, that's how you know I'm not reading that. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of this car in real life. It's fun to drive in video games, but it's not like a dream car of mine. But uh, this casting, perfect. I've seen enough of them in games to know that how proportionally they are. And yeah, this is perfect. This is perfect casting. There are headlights, the Porsche logo, big intakes. I love the multi spokes in gold on this one. Very nice. Porsche Spider. And that's interesting. They use like the grainy details for the back here, for like a premium. It's interesting. They didn't use them in the front. You can actually feel the texture. They didn't use them here either. It's interesting. That's a plastic insert. That's the detail. Clear window. I think they're, they're kind of like smoked windows almost, actually. This uh, this is a good casting. It's good casting. Right, that's my rule in Matchbox. As long as the casting's good, I'll buy it. Doesn't matter if I like the car, hate the car, don't care for the car. I don't care for the 918 that much, and I don't really have any of the Hot Wheels ones. I like this one because it has the hard top on there. The Hot Wheels ones are it's removed. Too good. Too good. Too good, Matchbox. So I think I'll collect later releases of that. And same with this. The Chevy El Camino. The original. 1960. This is a beautiful casting. I've been excited about this one. And the chrome trim just makes it so nice. It's so proportionate. Love the wheels. All you have is nice simple chrome trim on the sides here. And then you got chrome trim on the back and your tail lights. Classic rear end that is also shared with the Impala. And the front end too. Yes. This is an awesome casting. I got like the COE. It's okay. I don't know. It's a good casting. I don't know if I'm gonna buy any more of them. This, I'm cost saying it right now. This casting, I'm gonna complete every version uh, as long as it's a nice livery. No, no crazy stuff. Boom. Too good. Too. I, I can't say anything else about it. It's so good. Look at that stance. I mean, it's lowered, but I love it. All right. I think you know what's next. Last but not least, the Lexus LS 400. I actually don't have one of these in this. I have a ton of them, but the one I actually have opened is a custom. I never even had it in this stock or alliteration. <laughs> alliteration? No, no, that's, now I'm thinking about English class. God dang it. P 
Personally, did I really save the best for last? I love the Lexus LS400 in real life. I think the Matchbox one needs needs some help. Especially this release, the wheels are too big, and I think Matchbox realized that because the next release, they are smaller, but even these wheels don't even work. You know what works better? Six spokes. Six spokes work better. This is a custom Lexus LS400. You saw it in the video from Diecast Car Guru. This is the one he died. It is amazing. And I added my light details to it. Chrome trim, changed the wheels out. They don't even look like the same car. And if I further, and I don't want to pick on Matchbox about this because it's a decent attempt. But I want to compare it with the Tomica Limited Vintage. Uh, not the Tomica Limited Vintage. I wish there was a Tomica Limited Vintage. Tomica Premium. I want to compare it with that. One thing I'll give Matchbox credit for is the use of plastic for the trim. It gives it the look of plastic as where... Tomica painted it, and it's metal flake. It looks all metal. I just want to compare, and you can see the Matchbox one sits very high because of the yeah, Matchbox one's large. And even if I raise this one up to about the same height, it's the wheels on the Matchbox one. And, of course, they're not going to be as small as the Tomica here. But uh, even if I lower, like, even if I get smaller wheels, it just looks that much better. It sits that much better. So, the tough thing here with the Matchbox is the front bumper for me and the headlights. The back end's okay. I just don't think the front... I, I, mean, I think they fixed it, actually. The original ones, it was very soft looking. I think they actually fixed it uh, because, yeah, it does stick out. And then, of course, the headlights. It almost looks like second-gen headlights on a first-gen. Or they, it looks like they used the second-generation headlights to model the first-gen because of this... Actually, no, I can't even say that because this one's slanted, too. I have no idea. There's something that bugs me about this thing. And apparently, I can't put my finger on it. By itself, it's a good casting. It's lovely. It's amazing. I love the color. Of course, don't like the wheel choice. This two-tone's going to get annoying because of that. That fitment. But is this really the highlight of the case? Let me know. I think many of you will either take the El Camino or the Porsche. I mean, this this case is solid, though. Three very strong new castings from three different places in the world. America, Germany, technically Japan. It was designed for America, but I mean, the Celsius exists, so... But there you have it. Let me know what's your favorite of the video. What do you think about the Lexus? What do you think Matchbox could have done better on it? Um, but yeah, like I said, by itself, it's good. Just don't compare it to the Tomica and you're okay with it. Guess what? I had to. <laughs> That's it, guys. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.